Hello everyone and welcome back to Crime and Justice. Hold on, I've just got to make sure some... I need a light. I need a torch. Come on. Okay, just had to turn my mic down a little bit because I've noticed I seem very loud in my videos. Very loud. And it's echoing. And I thought, hold on, I've got my echo right down. There should not be no echo. So I've just turned my volume down. Hold on, I'm just checking to make sure I've got the volume up on this though. Yeah. So we've looked at the police interviews with Jen Soto, except for one. There is one I did I haven't shown yet. But I'm gonna show that tomorrow night because I'm gonna go I want to go through all the interviews, the police interviews and the interviews she did with the news station. Because there's little things that are sticking out and it's bugging me. Right, they're bugging me. So I thought I would do that with you lot. And if you've got any opinions and whatever, then you can chime in. Anyway, so and then we're going to be going over the interviews with the same with Stefan Stearns. Because he's, what he's saying isn't always telling or tallying up with what Jane says. And then their stories aren't always tallying up with what the grandparents are saying. And things like that. So, we're going to go over those. Jane's and Stephen Stone's game and try and get some sort of timeline. Because... I don't know how far to start back. I don't know where to, where to start back on the Friday when she went to her grandmother's. I think that would be the time to start back on, on the Friday after her birthday. Her birthday was on the Thursday. And then she went to her grandmother's on the Friday. And she was due to go home on the Saturday and she didn't. So she went to her grandfather's for the day. But we're not sure whether she came home Saturday night or went back to the grandmother's Saturday night. And that's something we're trying to find out. And then, it's just like, Jen said apparently that uh, Stefan brought Mag Magdalene home from the party. No. The aunt said she brought her home at 8.30 and Stefan turned up about 9-ish. So, there's, if that's true, then that's a lie. So, I'm just going to go over those interviews tomorrow night and Thursday. Right? So, if you're interested in that, and you want to do a bit of a deep dive into them interviews, please come and join me, because that's what we'll be doing tomorrow night and Thursday. Wednesday night and Thursday night, we've been doing some deep diving into the interviews. So it'll be a lot of stopping and starting, and all that lot. Anyway, tonight, we are looking at the interviews with the school teachers and neighbour. The neighbour's good. Right. Anyway, so this is courtesy of Grizzly True Crime. If you haven't already, I keep saying this, go over and subscribe to her channel. She has done some fantastic work on this case. She really has. She's got all the documents, all the photos, everything. 
she she goes through it in a minute detail. Really, she does. So please go over, sign up, subscribe to Grizzly True Crime. She's brilliant. I've been subscribed to her now for what over a year. Over a year. So anyway, so this is courtesy of Grizzly True Crime. Her dis the link will be in the description at the end. And we are going to watch the video a video of her she, that she made. And she did this first with all the commentary. That she does. Which is very very you learn a lot from her uh, commentary ones. You really do. Some things you don't pick up on yourself you, and someone else might pick up on it. And they put it in the comments. Oh, well, yes. I didn't spot that. So, if you want to go over and watch the ones with the commentary, please do so. Because you do learn a lot. Especially if, you, if you're interested in this case of Madeline Soto. Anyway, so we're going to start it. It's about an hour long. But I, I will be stopping in between. Okay, and I believe... Hold on. Where's my book? Where's my book gone? Where's my notebook gone? I can't find my notebook. Oh, is it here? Yes. There is... Hold on. Just trying to find it now. Right. right, here it is. We've got, which I believe is the counsellor. This is the first one. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five teachers, and then a neighbour. If you like nosy neighbours, I'd advise you to stick around for these nosy at this neighbour because they see and hear, they see everything going on, really. Like, you might say, oh, I don't like nosy neighbours, but believe me, if something happens at your home, right, you, you can guarantee these nosy neighbours are going to see what's happening. They're going to see it, right? Plus, I want to... Oh, God, I've got to find out where she lived. I did find out once where she lived. Uh, look. Oh, look at the press conference from five months ago. Cork TV as well. I'm subscribed to Vingy. Go and subscribe to his channel as well because he just he does some really good work on this. Right, let's have a look at what we can find. Come on. Right. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. I like the timeline, but 
that might help with a timeline. So let's just have a look at this. They start from Sunday. Alright, so last time from Sunday. Where really I want to start from the Friday. Because that's when she went to the grands after school. And then she went to the grandfather's on the Saturday. But we're not sure if she went home on the Saturday or she went back to the grandmother's. Because on the Sunday, she was having a birthday party at the grandmother's. It makes sense to go back to the grandmother's. I don't know. Why? And this is just literally whatever. But I'm, I really need to think of where she lived. Why? Right, and we'll also be looking at the videos of the day he was arrested because that is the same day that they did the press conference. As you can see here, press conference 3.30 p.m. and 9.52 p.m. Stearns is arrested on unrelated charges. Named prime suspect in Madeline Soto's case, but he wasn't charged with her case, her murder then. Right. Uh, March Stearns dodges questions from Fox Lake Five by being transferred from Orange County to Osceola County. Locked at 9 30 a.m. at 1 p.m. on Friday, March 1st, Sheriff announces investigators are now confident missing 13 year old Madeline Soto is dead. This is before they found her. Right? So they had enough evidence to actually stand there and say they believe she is on the road. 4.30pm, Madeline's body found off Hickory Road in Osceola County. Right? March the 2nd, Stern skips first court appearance. I wonder if this goes to court, if he's going to be in court every day, or is he going to do um, what? Oh God, I can't remember that like, piece of SHIT name. Oh God. Where he don't turn up for court, but then if he doesn't, I think the judge should. Like they did in the other case, put there say he has to be there for the day of the, if he's found guilty, right? The judge should say he has to be there for the sentencing, whether he's pulled there, dragged there, whatever. But he has to be there, and it, that's how it should be. He should face his peers. Um, so he's charged on April the 24th, oh God, God, that's my daughter's birthday, for the murder of Madeline. Right? So they found her on March the 1st, so then all the way from March, oh, quite a few, nearly, nearly two months you know what I mean? Went nearly. I'd say about six weeks went before he got charged with her murder. All right. Okay.
But here it says she was dropped off at the police, you know, Methodist church. But when we, you listen to those interviews, he says she, he dropped her off down this way be because he wants to walk up the road. So he's come up here, turned here, and he turned and then dropped her off quite way down here. Because he was, uh, he was trying to say he was going to go back to McDonald's with her. Right. But he didn't. Anyway, so. Let's forget about that. And let's go back to the interview that I want to share with you. Okay. Hello to those on X that are watching. Thank you for being here with me tonight. Um, we're going to be watching the police interview with the school teachers and neighbour. As I said, stick around for this because, yeah, the interviews with the teachers are very mm, mundane, you know what I mean? But it just explains what she was like at school, really. Right, but the the one at the end, the neighbour, the the couple at the end, the neighbour, husband and wife, they are interesting. <laughs> They're quite funny, really. I think. Anyway, so we're going to watch them, okay? Then I can get this to stay up there. Right, let's just go back here a minute. Is it full screen? I think it is. No, it isn't. It's all now it's going full screen. Okay. So as I said, this is credit to Grizzly True Crime. Please go over and subscribe to her. She is brilliant. She's done a lot of hard work on this case a lot. And there's a lot of YouTubers taking her information and she don't mind you using her information, her videos, as long as you credit them. And I always do. I always credit any YouTuber if I use their videos or their channels. Even if I've gone through a video of theirs and edited out them, right? If I cut out their commentary, then I will still credit them because it's their video. Anyway, so we're going to listen to this. Today's date is February 29th, 2024. The time is 1302 hours. Let's give a reference to Orange County case number 24-011313. I'm Detective Bradshaw with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Uh, Ma'am, could you see your person last? Right, this is Madison B. They've got her down as a teacher, but from how she talks, you'll hear how she talks and answers the questions. Uh, I think she's the school counsellor. And there is a lot of redaction in this as well. Why they redact the names out and why they redact out what their job is in the school, I do not know. But they do. They redact all that out. Say for me, please. Madison Brady. Could you spell Madison for me? M-A-D-I-S-O-N. And then Brady, B-R-A-D-Y? Yes. Okay, and what's your birthday? And my understanding is you are. We're here today to kind of talk about um, the situation. That's in I have a couple of per in specific questions that I have to ask you. Um, but can you tell me a little bit about like, you know, what you know, your relationship with her is just any information that you could give me on that. So I met her at the beginning of this school year in an ESC meeting. She was being transferred over from 504 that she was under that in sixth grade with our sixth grade counselor, Miss Merritt, okay. transferring over at the beginning of this year to the ESC services with our ESC staffing specialist, Miss McGregor. So I was sitting in on that meeting. I met in that meeting, they approved that switch and she got switched over. I heard a little bit about her background in terms of 
having ADHD, a lot of problems with focus that affects her schoolwork and grades, um, and then some mental health concerns in terms of a lot of anxiety and panic attacks. So from there, I have been doing ongoing check-ins with um, her throughout the school year thus far. Mm -hmm. I think we've met about, I was looking at it earlier, six times. Okay, since the beginning of the school year? Correct. Got it, okay. Um, when she has come to me, it's often been of those feelings of panic. Um, she's come to me like in the middle of class or during lunchtime, just feeling really panicked, um, kind of heavy breathing, feeling really overwhelmed. Um, and when we've had our conversations about, well, what's going on? What's making you feel this way? I've gotten responses saying, well, it's my anxiety. Sometimes I don't know. I'm just really overstimulated with all the noise in the cafeteria. But I've also gotten responses with, um, well, things at home being with her. There is a lot of background noise. And Grizzly has done her best to cut a lot of that out. But she can't give it all. So just bear with it. But there is a lot of background noise as well. And when I pressed about that, it seemed to be things along the lines of, well, she gets upset that I'm forgetful or that I don't clean my room the way she wants me to. And we talked about what that does to affect her. And she mm -hmm. says, yelling, that makes me get overstimulated. And then I can't respond to her in a way that she wants me to. So we discussed strategies for kind of calming herself down and talking. She's calm about how that makes her feel. Mm -hmm. And she reported to me that she did have that conversation for our past check-in since December. So December, January, February, we had a check-in every single month. And each of those check-ins, she had said to me, things are better at home and things are a little bit better at school. And I haven't had her come to me in months with any sort of panic or anxiety. I did have her mention on occasion her home situation at that time was when I asked her about that. The only thing she really said was, mm, I don't really like him. He's kind of weird. So I said, OK, well, what does that mean? How is he weird? Why don't you like him? And her responses were nothing of that level of concern. It was, oh, well, he eats all of our food and he hangs out in the living room and it makes me uncomfortable because I don't really like him. So I don't want him to be there, but nothing ever to the level of concern that we're seeing now? No, I'm not a qualified trained counsellor. I'm not. But I have done counselling courses. And the reason I didn't continue with it was because uh, I did do some placement work where I worked with children and used the skills I was learning in those group settings. And, but to continue, because I was married at the time and my husband was working, I'd have to pay for my courses. And I thought, no, I can't afford that. So I didn't continue with it. But I do, even now, even now, I still use some of the, um, some of the techniques that we learned in this counselling course and I just think if she had picked up on that so what what about him makes you feel uncomfortable she may have got something else out of her you know what I mean but she didn't pick up on anything like that she didn't like I, if that had been me I'd have gone so you say he makes you feel uncomfortable what is it that makes about him that makes you feel uncomfortable you're not giving her an open, like a yes, no question. You're getting her to answer with, wow, well, he, he does this or he does that. You know what I mean? So that's what I would have done. But obviously, they train differently in the USA. I don't know. And the last thing I heard about him was he's moving out. I'm happy about that. And that's helping me feel better with when was that conversation that he was moving out? That was about a couple of months ago, so I would say around December. Okay, so sometime in December, you guys had a meeting and she said... 
to. Okay, got it. Does she ever mention anything to you about having depression or like suicidal thoughts or any suicidal attempts or anything like that? She never mentioned anything along those lines. It was always more so focused on the anxiety and the panic. Okay. And a lot of times she wasn't able to verbally articulate what exactly was making that panic arise beyond feeling overstimulated or just gotcha. not knowing. Okay. So she never mentioned to you about wanting to hurt herself, wanting to die, wanting to, um, nothing like that. She never mentioned wanting to harm herself or wanting to die. She made comments in the interactions where she was feeling panicky saying things more so like, you know, this, this hurts and I don't, like this or want to deal with this but it was never anything like i want to hurt myself or end my life or anything along those lines gotcha okay and she didn't disclose that she was taking medication for anything other than just the anxiety or for the adhd and the anxiety i didn't talk to her specifically about medication and i can't recall okay. what was said it would be in the esc meeting notes if it gotcha. was discussed that okay she was or wasn't on medication and she has an iep you said correct, correct. so she switched for the 504 to the iep yes. gotcha cool okay did she mention anything um for those who don't know iep stands for individual education plan so it's a plan to work out for each child for their own individual needs sort of thing um a just didn't like him because he ate their food and he was in their living room. Like, did she say anything else to you? Disclose anything to you? She did not. She didn't talk about, asked her about those comments of him being weird and uncomfortable. The only things she gave me were, well, I don't know. He's just a little weird. He eats our food and he's always hanging out in the living room and I don't really want to be around him and nothing. And the way she said it was so like joking uh -huh. in terms of like, I don't know, he's weird type situation, like laughing about it. It never made me feel like there was a safety okay. concern. Okay. So she didn't disclose anything about him ever touching her inappropriately or it, them having any sort of a sexual relationship or them having any sort of an inappropriate relationship whatsoever. No, None of that was ever disclosed any, or anything along brought up to you. Okay. Let me check and see. There's, like I said, there's some other questions that I have to ask, and I just want to make sure that I touched on them. Um, okay, did you ever see? I know we talked about like the anxiety and the panic attacks, and you said she never, you know, mentioned anything about being depressed or being suicidal or anything. Did you ever see her exhibit any of those behaviors, like that she would? that she is depressed or that she like, did you notice anything about her that was out of the ordinary other than the things we've already talked about? It seemed more so to be very up and down. Okay. Like she would have those heightened moments of the panic and the crying and just kind of, she would go from that to just like shutting down mm -hmm. after the panic. And then if you talked her through it a little bit, like there's one specific instance in my statement that that she could not say what was making her feel that way and so I asked her to draw it out and she was able to do that okay and then she kind of put on there just like a lot of scribbles which to her she said that meant just like the chaos of all the feelings and thoughts that she's having that make her feel overwhelmed and then words she wrote so things along the lines of like why or crying and things like that and after that happened i reached out that she wasn't at school for a couple of days so i was like concerned of okay we went from this to now being out what is happening i reached out and at that point he's been struggling lately a lot of tears and feelings but that she was seeing a weekly therapist okay so she supposedly had someone that she was seeing weekly about all of this okay. and also stated at that point she hadn't been at school because she was sick and she was going to take her to the doctor that day and she mentioned seeing the drawing that came from our conversation and i you know encouraged her to share that with mom so she did and um, <coughs> you know she said that she appreciated that and that that helped her in that day, which at the end of that conversation with her, she was able to calm down okay. and feel better. But at that point, that's when it 
got a little concerning to the point that I reached out to just to say, hey, what's going on and found out, okay, she at least has supposedly weekly therapy sessions outside of school. And most of these things you said that would. You never hear the mother to mention that she, her daughter had weekly therapy outside of school. Never. You know what I mean? It's like, in the interview she does, and we'll be watching them as well, but not tonight. That'll be tomorrow night, I think. Yeah, tomorrow night we'll be watching her interviews. She, she talks about her anxiety and all that lot. Now, she never mentioned anything about, but she was going for weekly, she was in weekly therapy for that. You know what I mean? She was seeing someone outside of the school. Now, there's also something in the here, and I'll stop it when it gets there, that I find very interesting. Trigger these panic attacks or these anxiety-inducing issues were because of issues that were going on with um, correct, like where she would argue with it seemed to be a combination of bringing that from home, the okay. arguments and the feeling like she's taking on those feelings at home of, I don't feel safe in terms of not necessarily physically safe, but emotionally safe that at me and causing me to feel overstimulated. And okay. then I come to school and it's loud and there's lots of kids and right. I'm overstimulated again. But it wasn't. This usually you know, and things she said along the lines of my room's not clean or you forget to do this or you don't do okay. that so to me that's like thing about it was never especially at that age with right. the teenage age you know um okay so how about her grades or her behavior have you noticed any shift in her grades or the behavior that she would normally exhibit um, grades have seemed stable. We've been working on in our check-ins, kind of coming up with strategies because of her ADHD okay. and in terms of getting her missing work in to bring up the grades. And she seemed to be making improvements with that since around December when she started reporting things are better at home at school. Okay. Her last check-in was February 6th, I believe. And mm -hmm. at that point, she was very happy that day. I called her down just to do our check-in, and she said things are going really well. She feels really happy. Things are better. Things are better at school, and that was the last time we had a check-in. And that was because of the strategies that you had kind of given her to help her. Yes, with. she had been getting some of that work in. Her teachers okay. are working with her because she has the IEP, and she said that she used the strategies at home to talk. Not only that. Right, but a major thing happened in her life in the December, and that was Stephen Stearns moved out of that house, so he wasn't there on a daily, nightly basis. She didn't have to worry about coming home from school and seeing him sitting there and eating all her food and whatever. So she didn't have that worry about Stefan Stearns. Don't forget this young girl, only 13, had been groomed by this piece of SHIT since she was at least eight. Yet he'd known her since she was about six or seven. So she didn't have She, it's like I found a poem once. Well, I was doing my course in counselling, right? And I couldn't find that poem again. And I couldn't find my coursework to find the poem. And it's all about how you have different faces for different things. Like when you, if you're, if you're married, right? And you go to your family and you go, Visit your mum, your dad, you got your happy face, like, yeah, everything's fine. Then you walk out your mum's house and it's like, I hate you. Well, you've got a different face on when you go in the house, but when you walk out the house, it's like, oh, I hate you. I can't stand you, don't want to be by you, right? Meaning your husband, right? Or 
if you're having a falling out with someone and you so it's all, you've always got a different face for whatever occasion right you never show your feelings outside of the home so even your neighbors they come over and you go oh yeah it's been fine yeah 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 but then once they're gone they go flipping hell i hate this house so i hate this life you know what i mean but to the outside world, everything is fine. And that's what Maggie had learned to do. And don't forget, groomers also say, don't tell no one. This is just between me and you. This is our little secret. If anyone finds out, I'll have to move out and you'll never see me again. And we won't get to spend all these good times together. We won't, you know what I mean? About the when we're calm let's talk about what it's like when we're not calm and how that makes us feel gotcha she said she was able to successfully do that good that's excellent okay um i know we talked a lot about like you know kind of just briefly mentioned with her um and I know you've only known her for a short period of time, but you haven't noticed a dramatic shift from when you first met her to now that's negative. Like, have you? Correct. When this first came up, my first thoughts are, oh, things have been better. So okay. I'm like. So it's surprising where, to you, yes, it sounds like. like. Where, how did. Uh, how did we get to this point? Yes. Okay. So there's nothing that would stand out to you that would make you think that something was on like that things were declining at home you actually thought things were actually getting better at right. home based on what she was telling you from the information that i had from her okay without at that point having spoken to friends or anything anything i had to me the perception was things are getting better and what was the last date that you met with her february 6th okay. and that was the date that she was like hey things are getting better we're using these strategies at home okay. All of that. Got it. Okay. We were supposed to have our next session to follow up this week. Okay. And obviously, I haven't been able to do that. Okay. Um, is there anything else you can think of that I have not asked you that you want to relate to me while I have you in here? To me, the only things that are sticking are the comments of he is weird mm -hmm. and I don't like him. And okay. I wish I had more information to say where that came from but when I asked that I all I got was he eats our food he hangs out in the common areas okay okay all right do you swear and affirm everything you told me is true to the best of your knowledge yes okay perfect so the time is now 13 15 hours right so that was, I, from what I can understand, would be the school counsellor, right? Because she said she'd pull her out of classes to have their weekly meetings and intervention sort of thing. But she said she did push on that weird thing. But it all depends how long she spent with her as well. You know what I mean? If she's only spending half an hour with her, it's not that long. I don't know how long she would spend with her. And being as it's been taken out of school time, in school time, it wouldn't be, I shouldn't imagine it'd be like an hour long session. Because that's an hour of a lesson she's missing and she needs all the lessons, all the, she needs to be in her lessons. Right, and having ADHD just makes it, doesn't make it impossible for a child to succeed in school. I've known, I've heard people with ADHD go through school, college, universities, and they're in high paying jobs now. Right? It's just that they have to look at, they have to focus in a different way how they do the work. Right, and they've been mentioned of 
people by DIG having a list, making a list of things they have to do each day. So it could be a list, keep tidy your room up, right? Uh, do your homework. Uh, I don't know, whatever. And as you've done those things, you can tick them things off, but you keep to a routine of doing that every day. And you can get through it. it just You just need that little extra help. You really do. Because the attention span isn't always there either. So, like, I remember when I had a phase oh, over a year, nearly a year ago now, and I was here, there, and everywhere, every day. I think, right, I've got to go to the shop, so I'll go in my bedroom, pick my clothes out, what I'm going to wear that day, put them on my bed. And then I think, oh, hold on. So something else come into my, popped into my head. And then I'll go off and do that. And then while I'm doing that, oh, God, yeah, I haven't done that. And then I've got to, I'll stop what I'm doing there and go and do that. And then 2 o'clock comes round and I'll go back in the bedroom. I'll go, sugar. There's my clothes. I was supposed to have gone to the shops today. You know what I mean? So that's how it was. I was here, there, and everywhere, all over the place. And um, I was telling my son, and he said, ADHD, Mum. I went, you can... With that ADHD. And why it was, it's because I wasn't sleeping. Right? And I was maybe getting two hours sleep at the most a night. And my brain was not shutting down. I could not get my brain to shut down. So then I went to the doctors and I told them, I said, I can't keep this up. I can't. I'm here that I, I can't get anything done. Right? And so they put me on this medication then, which helps me sleep. Helps my brain shut down. And it does help. And I do get some sleep. Right? It's just that I'm very, don't even think of, like, sometimes my son will say, I'll come and help you with your shopping, Mum. But I've got to be up, like, from 9 o'clock in the morning and at the shops for 9. Right? Because he's got to be at work for 11. Because his job is 11 till 9 or something like that. So, and I thought, I can't do this. I cannot function before 12, before lunchtime. And so... Now, I get up about 10-ish. If I'm up before 10, I know I'll end up on that sofa having a little a half hour or an hour's nap keep in the afternoon. I know I will. Right? So, I get up about 10-ish. By 12-ish, I'm thinking, right, well, i best go and get dressed. So, that takes me another hour to sort that out. So, I don't get to the shop till about half 2, 3 p.m. So, it does help, but it still makes me so groggy in the morning. So, I'm not a morning person at the moment. I'm really not. So, let's continue. Oh, put that back up there. Right, the next teacher is, yes, Annalise. And now it's at the top. Grizzly. She does some brilliant work. She's got the teachers all named out. I've got it written down here in my book. Hi, I'm a Detective Payne. We'll talk to the here. Okay. I'll uh, just need to get a little bit of information from you once we get in here. Okay. Got a few questions, and then you should be able to get back to class. Okay. okay. For those who are joining, we are looking at the a video done by Grizzly True Crime. Please go over and sign up, subscribe to her. She's done, she's done so many videos on this case. She really has. And she's got all the files, the, everything. And so she goes through all the files, what, what they say, what it means, everything. So if you're into this case, go and subscribe. If you aren't already, go and subscribe to Grizzly True Crime. Right? 
I've been, as I said, I've been subscribed now over a year. And because it was last year, sometime when I subscribed to her. And um, I actually, it was when, when was it, did I start watching her? I can't, oh, I can't remember now. Oh, what was she covering at the time? Oh, it was when that um, park patrol officer was up for murder charge for his for the murder of his mistress and their baby. Yeah, that was over a year ago now. So, and I was up to like two, three, and so was she because the court case because of the time difference between you know where she was at the time and where I was. I was like, oh god. Two o'clock. Oh God, it's three o'clock in the morning, and the court case is still going on, <laughs> right? But she does do all the court cases, and I will be covering the court case for this one as well. I'm keeping my eye on one other case, Audrey Cunningham. Not much is coming out about that case at the moment, but I will go and try and find some information out on that case. Anyway, we're looking at the police interviews with the teachers. We've just listened to the one teacher called Oh, what was her name? Madison pardon me. Madison, which I believe is the counsellor. Now this teacher I believe is the PE teacher. I'm not sure, but I think it is. It's just by what she says. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. There is a lot of background noise, and on some of the interviews, you hear these beeping noises and all this lot. So I'm sorry about that. Spray for some for me. A N N E L I S E. Ninety eight. Mm -hmm. Put eighty eight. <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, projecting my own uh, my own age here. Uh, and what's a good address for? It is February 29th, 2024, about 1.12 p.m. Um, I am. Okay. Just bear with me. I'm going to take some notes while we talk. Mm -hmm. you, um, how, uh, how do you think, how well do you think? I think I know her pretty well. Okay. I mean, we have a little, we've had some interactions. There's a lot of kids in. Okay. Um, you know, I have seen some interactions with her. Okay. Who does she hang out with the most in class? Um, she hangs out with a student. Her name is. Okay. And um, another girl in my class. Who was her name? And. Any idea how to spell that last name? I want to say... As I said, there is a lot of reductions in this, in these interviews. A lot. It sounds about right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so she... There's classes in there. And... So she is in the class, but has another... Okay. Mm -hmm. Any problems with girls? Nope, I've never really had issues. Um, I've always been a very anxious type of student. Okay. So anytime she needed to ask me something mm -hmm. or she felt like something was wrong, she always wanted to bring her friends with her. She always okay. had like a buddy system with her okay. to kind of huddle in and they would be like asking the question for her. Um, okay. So was she shy or was she? 
I don't know if maybe like shy around authority figures. Okay. Because I see her like with her with her friends, and she's not. Yeah. You know, they're playing volleyball and yeah. laughing and talking. Um, okay, that makes yeah. sense. Have you ever talked to any of the other teachers at the school about? Have you heard anything else about her? Nope. Okay. I know she did get student of the week a few weeks ago. Okay. The week of February 16th. I think Ms. DeLuca, uh, I saw a little report. She put her on there. Nominated her. Any idea what she was nominated for? Um, I don't remember what it said. Excellent or something like that. She did, she did something in her class. Okay. And Mr. Luca nominated her. Have you ever had like a one on one conversation? She confide in you? Do you feel like you guys were that close? Or? Um, there were some times like uh, we do some testing in the beginning of the year, like fitness okay. testing. Okay. Um, and she was running and she was telling me, I can't do it. And um, I was like, that's okay. Like, you need, do you need to get your inhaler? And she was like, yes. So I walked her to the locker room. Okay. We got her inhaler. And then I just told her, like, it's okay to sit out. Like, you don't have to. No, inhaler. You don't hear the mother mention that either. You don't mention, hear the mother mention how she used, she was asthmatic. She used an inhaler. And all that law. Don't you hear nothing of that? So, I wonder why. You know, run crazy. Yeah. Um, so, we've had that like one on one, and then times where she felt like she needed to go to the counselor. Okay. She was upset about something um, or anxious. She would ask me. That's okay. when her friends would kind of huddle in with her. Okay. And she would say, like she needs to go to the counselor. Okay. Like she needs to go to the counselor, and then I would write her a pass, and send her to Miss. And then the girls would ask if they could go with her. Okay. And kind of drop her off, and then come back. Any idea why she needed to go to the counselor? There was times that she said that she was feeling anxious. Okay. Um, and she just said like, I feel like I need to talk to a counselor. So. Okay. I just normally when kids are saying that and they recognize they need to talk to a counselor I yeah them okay yeah, yeah absolutely mm -hmm. I, I didn't know if maybe yeah it went further than that mm -hmm. or not okay <clears throat> have you seen any recent changes in her behavior not really okay um she always just hangs around those girls and like it's crazy that of the description of what she was wearing because she wears that all the time like her great her green hoodie and her yeah. black biker shorts and the crocs like mm -hmm. as soon as they said that i was like oh yeah like that's something that she wears like okay. all, all the time kind of but no changes in behavior though mm -mm. okay Any signs of depression or suicidal inclinations? How how is her grade in your class? No, I have noticed, and I did try when I did the recording, and then I edited out what Grizzly was saying, just like what she's done here, I tried to edit out the word S-U-I-C-I-D-E because YouTube are very funny with words like that so we have to be careful what words we say and yet these reporters are saying it in, these police are saying it in the interview so it's very hard to redact that ad. So please share this video because YouTube tend to not push out videos where certain words are mentioned. 
probably a little atypical, right? She doesn't dress out. Okay. Um, so she had a locker. Um, Why doesn't she dress out? I'm unsure. Okay. I don't know. Um, she did have a locker assigned to her at okay. the beginning of the year. Um, I checked it just recently. Nyalats. No, I don't know. In our schools, when I was at school, you had to change into your PE kit. You had no choice. You you couldn't just like go into school when like some shorts and a sweatshirt or whatever or a t-shirt underneath your sweatshirt and then just take your sweatshirt off and put your trainers on. You couldn't do that. You had to like when I was at school it was PE skirts, not shorts. It was skirts. And I remember we used to have to walk from the school up this road to this park where we used to play hockey. And that was always in the winter months. And it was fucking freezing. And then you'd have all the perps beeping the horns at you because you got these short gym skirts on. Really? Now they can wear shorts, leggings, you name it. In fact, I've, I've seen a girl the other day wearing a skirt to school, to school, a school skirt. And as she walked off the bus, you could see the, her backside. I'm thinking, really? Really? Pull that skirt down just a touch, sweetheart. Leave something to the imagination for these Do you know what I mean? And what had happened, her skirt had risen up. It was short enough as it was, but it was rising up, and you could see all the back, all the bum. And I was telling my son, he said, Wow, well, when it comes to my daughter going to school, she's not wearing skirts like that. I thought, Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Asked me to check it. Okay. And the lock, there was nothing on there, and there was nothing in the locker. Okay. A lot of kids don't like dressing out. They're like, why would she not dress out as she, as they call it, dressing out, changing, getting changed? I don't understand that. Could it be because she felt embarrassed by, by like she was always, they said she always wore sweatshirts. Did she have some markings on her arms or anything? Did she feel embarrassed about her body because of what she was going through? Changing in front of kids or yeah. it's more comfortable, but we always give them options. There's like little showers in the back and go to the bathroom, but okay. Mm -hmm. So if she doesn't dress out, does she still participate or does she do yeah, something? Yeah, they're different? allowed to still participate. Okay, we so give she them just... two separate grades okay. of like dress out and participation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I did see a comment. Someone said uh, on this on Grizzly's channel, they said, um, on a Monday, she did PE, right? Now, you remember in that interview at the mother's office when I was asking them what she was wearing, right? And Stefan said jeans, and the mother said, no, nope, it was black shorts, because the mother would know that on a Monday it would be PE, so she'd be wearing black shorts because of PE rather than jeans or something, right? Stefan wouldn't know her school activities. He wouldn't know what she did on a day-to-day -day basis. But the mother would. So that's probably why she's so adamant that she's wearing black shorts. Because on a Monday, she'd have PE. And Stefan said jeans, and that is because that is what he put her in. And what was she finding? Jeans. It's a, a little different too with PE because they get pulled out of our classes to go to tutoring or other things like that. Okay. So 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Has she been pulled out of your class for anything like that? I believe so. You mentioned so. the counselor. Anything else? I think um, we do this thing called MTSS. Okay. It's an intervention like um, tutoring. Okay. I believe she was on that list for a little bit in the beginning of the year. So they would, she would go like twice a week. They would take her out of PE. Okay. And she would go there. And what's it called? MTSS intervention. MTSS intervention. Yeah, that's uh, with Miss Godwin. Okay. I believe she was on that list. Okay. Okay. Um, have you ever seen any any signs of abuse for her or anything like that? No. Any bruises, any references to anything that, that was going on? No. Nope. I know it's kind of hard looking back now. Yeah, it, all, it always I is. I know, but, I know. But okay. no, I mean, I guess just maybe the inclination of, like, her maybe wearing a hoodie all the time. Okay. Like, it's okay. cold. You know, yeah. you don't know. Yeah. Kids, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. No. Nothing nothing obvious. Mm -hmm. She hasn't mentioned anything to you. No. Nope. Never saw any bruising. Mm -hmm. Nothing crazy like that. No. Nope. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything else you think I need to know about? About your your relationship? No. Nope. Okay. Um, yeah. Just uh, the only thing I would say is, just, she, to me, she was a very anxious child. So okay. for her to like maybe go away on her own just didn't sound right to me. Okay. Knowing that she always needed a buddy or she needed somebody with her. Okay. Um. So yeah. Have you ever? Any from Actually, anybody from around? I've met her okay. um, for one of the PE teachers maybe a few months ago. Um, we had a short, brief conversation, but okay. nothing. She was very nice, and okay. that's really it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Nobody else. No. Aunts, cousins, nothing. No. Nope. Okay. Cool. Um, I, I ask because school yeah. these communities are pretty oh, small. Yeah. You know, cousins go to other schools, yeah. and it's it's all pretty close yeah. to them. So, um, does she doesn't have any relatives that go here, does she? Not that I know of. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Did you have any questions or anything for me? Yeah. All right, Miss Rentis, can you swear and affirm everything you told me has been true and correct? Yes. All right. You can have, go back to class. Hi, Mister. Right. So. What was it he said? Um, I forgot now. I should have stopped it when I heard it. Um, oh, God, what was it now? Something. I can't remember now. Right, I can't remember. I'll probably remember. And when I do, I'll stop the video. I can't remember. <laughs> Luca, how you doing? My name's Detective Payne. You can just call me Jeff. You want to have a seat? Sorry for the ominous setup, yeah. but this is uh, at least for in some air conditioning. At least, so. All right. So uh, first name is Angela. Angela. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, they put us kind of over here in the corner, didn't they? So. Uh, there's a handful of us. That's why we're out here. We're not in the office. But um, what's a good address for you? Okay, cool. Um, how do you? She's at my first grade class. So she's supposed to be in my first grade class. Okay. Um, what do you teach? How well do you know her? Um, I thought she was pretty well. She um, has been in my class all year round. Um, she's always very sweet and she struggles a bit. I mean, all my kids, kids are intensive kids, so yeah. they're the students who are struggling. Um, she was on my door decorating team. So she's, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut yeah. off, but she's been in your class since fall. Since the beginning of the year. Fall yes, of 23. And then, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, she was on my door decorating team. She was okay. actually chosen to be my student of the week from two weeks ago for helping us win our door decorating competition with our friends. Okay. Um, and she came before school and after school a couple times for that event, which was one week. Okay. So, so she got student of the week. Yes. For the door sure. decorating. Certificates on my desk to give her. Okay. Did you? Did they win door decorating? Yeah. You said that she came early? Yes, her and her came with a few other students to help with the door decorating the week of literacy week, which okay. check if you need exact dates. Um, I think it was January. Do you have a picture of the door? Uh, yeah. yeah. Can you text that to me?
and I will text you right now so you'll have my number. So, see, those doing this, uh, just show a picture on the, the other, on the other video that she did with this about the teachers and everything, where she does her own commentary, right? And she just show a picture of the door that she do. And what with this teacher, and I think it was, um... Her music teacher. I'm not. No, this isn't a music teacher. This I'd say this was a, a arts teacher or something like that. But a uh, a music teacher said she always joined in. She always went to whatever. I just get the impression that she's more on the creative side, more than the intellectual side of the education. If you know what I mean. Uh, she'd enjoy doing a uh, crafts and drawings and art and dancing and singing and all this lot more than she did English, maths, science, whatever. Which you do get some kids that love their science. I must admit, I didn't. Um, because they didn't make it fun. Nowadays, a lot of teachers make it more fun when teaching anything science and when they're teaching maths and make it more fun. I wish they'd done that when I was at school. Our door was all about spreading kindness and love and they put in a lot of thought and effort into it. Go with it. So I'll send you the picture oh, perfect. Of her in it. Yes, perfect. Perfect. How well do you think you know? You said you thought you knew her pretty um, well. Did you guys have like one-on-ones? Like, not really you... any one-on-ones. Okay. Like I didn't even know. Like I didn't. Okay. Like I, I thought I knew her. Like I know my other students, but we've never really had a lot of personal talks. Okay. Um, really her showing up for door decorating was probably the most that I've had like private conversations with her. What It was with her other friends there. Oh, that's okay. The most tech savvy. Like I've been talking with the other teachers. Now, these interviews were done, uh, I believe, on the 29th. Because Stefan was arrested on the 28th. And you hear a lot of the teachers refer back to, oh, nothing like that. So they know what he's arrested for, right? So it's like nothing like that and things like that. So these interviews were done on the 29th, I believe, which would have been 26, 27, 27, the Thursday. She was found on the 1st, which was the Friday. I know she's very good friends with don't know okay. I'm speaking of okay she's also good friends with I believe okay, okay. I think that is sending to you now the picture right next to her and they yeah. both won student of the week for okay door decorating okay. okay so Green sweater is uh, yeah. behind. Who are these two kids on the left? Did you ever? You said you never really had like one-on-one -on -one conversations with. Them. For door decorating, okay. we would chat about certain things. Yeah, so I know she didn't God. confide in you or anything. Not anything like what we learned about last night. Nothing like okay. that. Okay. Um, what did they tell you last night? Um, about the. Maybe sexual assault. I don't know. I just know that there was maybe some kind of okay. stuff on his cell phone. Okay. Who, who told you that? Um, I saw it online. The um, police, the sheriff. You saw it online. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The sheriff report. Okay. Okay. Sorry. So they know about the SI because she says the full word. So please share this video because 
YouTube will not push this video out as much because of certain words being used in here. Okay. As I know, um, the only thing that I can say related to that is I know that she had been reading a book a couple months ago and um, it had kissing in it and it was a graphic novel and she was like scandalized that there was a kissing scene. So I um, like I hope and pray that nothing had been happening sexually. I don't know, but she yeah. had been acting like, oh, my gosh, kissing like that. It was like a shocking thing to like see a picture of two people kissing. Um, they had been talking during, again, I'm not part of this conversation, yeah. they were talking about how they had heard um, Lady Gaga's, oh my god, I want to take a ride on my disco stick, and they Miss DeLuca, did you know what that song was about? So they've had, but they were all acting very, you know, scandalized, shocked by it. So I'm yeah. hoping and praying that she has not had that, but I don't. No, she's probably, act, she's probably behaving like that, because if she just came around and said, oh, kissing, that's nothing. Like I've gone, her friends are just gone, well, what do you mean? Kissing likes nothing. Why? What do you mean by that? How do you know it's nothing? Right? So, acting like she did, it's like, oh my God, kissing, no, oh yeah. You know what I mean? She's hiding behind a pharaoh. She's putting a, a front up. But that's most of my students. They're 12. They're just learning about that kind of thing. Yeah. Going through sex ed and science class right now. Is there evidence of that? Uh, the investigation is still ongoing, so unfortunately I can't really go into too many details. So she never made any disclosures no. to you about... Like you said, sexual abuse, no. you know, being abused in any other way at home, nothing like that? No, I okay. didn't even know that. I never heard her mention. I don't think I've ever. I'm trying to think if she came to open house, but I don't think so. And to think of it, kissing is not something people like that piece of SHIT are interested in as such. You know what I mean? So I've got to be careful how I say things as well. It's like there's kissing and there's kissing, if you know what I mean. So, kissing on the lips is something they're not interested in, should I say. I believe so. Okay. Have you seen any signs of depression or suicide? No. Suicidal ideation? Like that? Okay. <clears throat> I was shocked when the kids were telling me about the live in the woods conversation. I was, no, why is that? was on her phone, but I was shocked to hear something like that. She was very excited about her birthday. Okay. How is her for grades in your class? Low. Okay. She's had a D pretty much every quarter. Kind of like when we um, are working in class, she's able to, and then she does get extended time. It's okay. the follow through and getting things done that she didn't really do very often. Okay. Seen any real shifts in her behavior? 
If anything, I would say that it was almost better since like door decorating. Like I felt like she was trying a little bit harder in class. Okay. And I'm sorry, when was the door decorating competition? I think that's what I was going to take. I know where that picture was from. I'm sorry. So that picture was when it was finished, was January 26th. So that was a Friday. So that full week was when we did door decorating. Okay. January 22nd through the 26th. 22nd. And there was a few days before school and a few days after school that they came and decorated. I no longer have the log of what days they came. Okay. I just, once I had her name on the list. All right. Now, when we listen to the interview by the mother, you'll hear the mother, and we're not listening to them tonight, but you will hear the mother say, oh, she never did any after-school clubs or anything like that, right? But this teacher says how she was coming, while she's doing this door thing, decorating the door, she would be coming in early with her friends, maybe, but she'd be coming in early and staying later to do this door. But you don't hear that her mother say that. You know what I mean? You don't hear her say, well, I must admit in January she was going in earlier and she was going after school later. And she did get a reward for students of the week because of her work she'd done on this door. Right? Because she was going in early and she was staying later. But you don't hear none of that from the mother. Just practice the energy. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Is there anything else you think I need to know about? Is anybody she talked to? Anybody? Do you feel like she? Anybody she might have confided in? Friends, and then when I'm talking to other teachers, they yeah. go, "Oh no, the other so on." They are like, "Oh, we don't see us as much." But I would have said that together. All in my my first period together. Okay. So they're all together, and I kind of just associate the three of them together. Okay. Is there any, anything else? I think so. Okay. I just, it's, I've been crying since Monday since they called me and tried to ask if she was in my first grade class that day. I just wish we had more information. Okay. I certainly appreciate taking that talk to me. Okay. Can you surrender from everything you told me has been shown correct? Yes, absolutely. Right. Thank you. So, um, what's your first name? Uh, Nick. Right. So, why don't we hear of this from her mother? How she went in early and she stayed after school? later all we get off the mother is you know she didn't do any after school clubs or anything like that now if my daughter was missing right i'd be pushing out everything about her how she's so creative she is she likes her arts and crafts sort of thing and you're hearing another by another student uh teacher which i think it is Hmm. Nicholas, I don't know if it needs to be official sure. or not. I've got another teacher. Um, another one before, like Nicholas. He's a music. I think he's like the music team. Uh, phone's the best way to reach me, though. Okay. Though, yeah, yeah, I just try to list everything that. in here in case, yeah, we, in case we need it. So, um, so how do you know? She is in my seventh grade. Or seventh, yeah, seventh grade, seventh. Period. Day. In there since fall? Yes, since we've been here. How would you say your relationship is with her? Oh, great. Like, um, she, I think she likes me as a teacher, and uh, she's a very good, well behaved student. Um, on the quieter side, um, she sometimes does her work. Um, I guess, like, she has her, we call them sleepy days. Okay. Where, like, she'll come in. Just want to do nothing but put her head down and kind of ignore most things, but then like she'll end up doing her work later on. Okay. Yeah. Do a lot of kids do that? 
Not really. Okay. No. Like a lot of them will put their head down, but she'll do it a lot more often than the other ones. Okay. Just bear with me. Let's take oh, no, of course. Time. No, that's good. Um, did you guys, would you say your relationship is close with her? Um, as far as teacher student goes, I would say fairly average. I don't know okay. much about her personal life or anything like that, but I keep okay. like academic tabs on her mostly. Okay. Yeah. But the typical, hey, how's your weekend? Did you have fun? I knew she had a birthday party this okay. you know, past weekend, stuff like that, but basic information. That's okay. hard. So just typical conversations? Yeah. Okay. Did you guys ever have like one-on-one -on -one conversations? Was it always like in a group and passing, things like that? If we ever had one-on-one -on -one conversations, it was just about grades and maybe that she wasn't, like she needed to pull up something or turn in an assignment, but okay. that would not have been more than once, maybe twice. Okay. So she never confided anything in you? You guys never talked about home life, anything like that? Unfortunately, no. Okay. Uh, no. A substitute teacher for my class, but I never actually saw her in person. Okay. When was the sub? Oh wow. <laughs> oh, when I got married. Um, October twenty first, I think, was uh, when she was my sub. Okay. Might have been a week before that. October twenty three. Uh, yeah, October twenty twenty three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Have you seen any recent changes in her behavior? Recent? No. No. Um, How about changes overall in her behavior? Actually, yeah, I don't know why it's such recent, but not really. Okay. Um, she had less sleepy days, I guess, okay. would actually be a thing. Okay. Um, it's more some being easier. But other than that, no changes. Has she had any signs of depression or suicidal ideations, inclinations? Nothing with suicide. I know that like fatigue and stuff like that can be a sign of depression, but without anything being confided in me, I never assumed or anything like that. I just okay. she never got any sleep. Okay. Again, I will say please share this video because as you've heard certain words are being mentioned and YouTube will tend to not push these videos out. So the more you share it, the more people will see it. And plus, they might be able to relate to it or they might know someone who's going through this and think, oh, this child is going through the same symptoms. You know what I mean? And it might help with... A, Another child, you never know. So please share this video. And for anyone just joining, we are talk well we are listening to the police interviews with the teachers at Madeline Soto's school. So far we've had hold on, I'm just trying to find the names again. Um okay, I'm on the wrong page, that's why. So far, we've had Madison, who I believe was the counsellor. We've had Annalise, who I believe was the PE teacher. We've had An Angela, don't know what she did. And Nicholas, who we've got now. This is Nicholas we're listening to now. What's her grades like? Uh, they were they were a little bit rough, and then she brought them up. Okay. She'll go through phases of not turning anything in, turning everything in, not turning it in, turning it all in. I would still say probably in the BC range, but I'm not 100% okay. sure right now. I have to pull it up. No big shifts in behavior, nothing like that? No. Okay. Nope. Even on Friday, that Friday, she said, okay, I'll see you Monday. Do you know which Friday that was? The Friday before her birthday party, and she disappeared. Okay. So when was that? Was that the... Uh, 20... 16th? 23rd. 23rd. The 
23rd, I believe, is when, yeah, because we had Jerry Craft the day before, basketball game. Okay. Yeah, so as we were leaving seventh period, I always say, like, oh, I'll see you guys Monday, and I'm pretty sure she said something one wants to see you Monday, too, but can't be 100% sure. Okay. Hello? Okay. Anything else you think I need to know? How oh. talk to friends, anything she yeah, unfortunately, said? Unfortunately, I don't think I have any more information that you guys have because okay. a student did come up to me and tell me that um, she uh, was talking with friends about wanting to live in the woods okay. like after she turned 13, but I think you guys already have all that. Yeah. Um, other than that, no, she just seems like a very like normal, like on the quiet and tired side, but like a very normal kid, you know? Okay. Wouldn't have thought anything would be up with her. She had the... Yeah, of course she was tired. Of course she was tired up until he moved out because she wasn't getting a, like I don't know I always had my kids in a routine I did I had them in a great routine right and by nine o'clock especially in the summer by nine o'clock they was in bath in the BJ's and up to bed whether they went to sleep at nine o'clock is another thing. My daughter was. My daughter was asleep by night. But my son used to listen to music on his TV. Music channel on the TV. So he'd fall asleep listening to music. And me, me or his dad would always go in and turn the music off when we went to bed. So I'd say anything between nine and ten. My kids were asleep. That they wasn't up, they wasn't up in the living room, they was up in the bedrooms, and in the winter, they was in by 7.30 because it was too dark, there's nothing going on out there, right, so they was always in by 7.30, and by, what, 8, quarter past 8, they was upstairs in their bedrooms. And not only that, at 7.30 in the UK, we had, like, a watershed on TV, and I think we still do now, where certain programs weren't allowed on TV until after 9pm. So we always made sure our kids were upstairs in their bedrooms before we watch any of those programs, right? Sometimes, as they got a bit older, when they was like 14, 15, whatever, they was still up at 9pm. But nine times out of ten, they're up in the rooms. And they're just chilling out and going to sleep. And so to, to go to bed at 11 p.m., that was not in my, that was not even uh, in my vocabulary. Nope, nope, nope. But it was a, no, it wasn't happening. Not on the school night. So they always got good sleep. So she wasn't getting good sleep because she was going to bed or her mum would kick her out of her bed because her mum had a headache. So she'd kick her out of her bed and say, go and sleep with that piece of SHIT. Go in his bed with him. You know what I mean? Who does that? She's waking her daughter up because she's got a headache or whatever. She's waking her daughter up. To get her out of her bed, which is like a king or queen size bed, to go and sleep in her part in that piece of shit bed with him, and it looked like it was only a, a double, maybe in his room, or in that room where she was, which was a a section section guppy in which came from the dining room and living room. And then her bedroom was sectioned off. It was only a single bed. Who would break their child up? You know, they've got school the next day and kick them out of your bed. I wouldn't. Not when I'm in a big bed. Headache or no headache. Anxiety or no anxiety. I wouldn't be waking my child up saying, you go sleep in that bed. I need, need this bed to myself. Birthday party coming up, so we assume that she would actually be in really good, you know, spirits and stuff like that too. 
Okay. Anything else? I wish I had more. All right. Sorry. That's okay. I appreciate taking the time to talk to you. Yeah, Nick. of course. Anytime. Uh, can you swear to from everything you told me is oh. true and correct? Yes, absolutely. All right. Have a good one. Absolutely. Today's date is February 20th. Now we're going to go on to the interview with Elizabeth, another teacher, okay? We've got this teacher, one more teacher, and then the neighbour. So we've got three more interviews, and then that's it. 29th, 2024, the time is 13, 18 hours. This is Detective Hunt for OCSO case 24-01-11313. Can you state your full name? Elizabeth Ellis. Elizabeth. And is that common spelling, Elizabeth? Yes. And how do you spell Ellis? E-L-L-I-S. Yeah. And how long have you worked here? Uh, this is my 10th year. 10 years. Wow. Okay. And um, you were teaching this whole year? Yes. And you've been employed here this whole year? Yes. Okay. Um, are you familiar with a seventh grade student that goes here by the name of? My students. And you teach her. What period do you have her? She was in my third period. And then in January, she was moved to my sixth period. Okay. Um, and are you familiar with why I'm out here to talk to you at all? Yes. Okay. Well, I just wanted to see if maybe you had an idea. Well, I just have a very specific few questions regarding um can you maybe tell tell me i guess a little bit tell me a little bit about her what's she like uh, she's very quiet mm -hmm. reserved um she she looks sad quite often okay she has a, like, even on your assignment like to redirect her mm -hmm. within a very short amount of time she's lost focus again she has her or she'll have her head down uh -huh. she's often um in the clinic uh -huh. whether she was in my third period or currently in my sixth period uh she's oftentimes in the clinic okay and what's that for usually either she's not feeling well or she has anxiety okay um when you say she's not feeling well what is that uh what does that mean? And what if she, did she tell you ever? She's like, I'm not feeling good. Can I go to the nurse? Did she ever describe it at all? Like my stomach's hurting, my head's hurting. I'm feeling sad, anxious. I just know that she has anxiety. Okay. So I just allow her to go to the nurse and see the nurse. And is that common in other periods too that you know of? I don't know if y'all ever talk about it. I don't know about the other periods, but it's stayed about the same as far as third period versus sixth period. Okay. Is she ever absent from school? Um, she is. She is. Mm -hmm. Without looking at my sheet, but I can't tell you how yeah, frequent it is. Would you, I mean, would you describe her just off the top of your head as like frequently absent or is it just not frequent enough for you to notice and call it something? Because she's in the clinic so much and she goes home, she's, she's missing my class a lot. Got it. So whether she's gone home or she's still in the clinic, she does miss my class a lot. Okay. Um, so you said normally she's very quiet and reserved. Um, how long have you known her for? For the school year. This is the first year you've taught her yes. here? Is she a new student here? I, I am not sure. Okay. That's um, have you noticed any recent changes in her behavior? I have. Okay. Um, how so? On January 22nd, with her being moved, and the only reason why I know this is because I was looking at my talking points. And on January 22nd, I met mom through talking points and said that, explained to her that she had been moved to my sixth period and that I'm noticing she's more tired, more um, like withdrawn in my sixth period mm -hmm. class. Like she's, she's lost more focus than usual. Mm -hmm. And Oh, I just forgot. You're just seeing her in her natural state. I forgot to give her her medicine. So she she got moved into your sixth period class? Correct. Where was she moved from? So she was in my... So there was a problem with chorus. Oh, okay. And so the only other period that that particular chorus that she was in was 
third period, so they swap third and sixth. So she's now in chorus third period and me sixth period, and it gotcha. was different. So she was just moved for timing reasons, for schedule she, reasons. Right. Gotcha. But there was nothing happening in chorus. I don't. That I you know that's of. Not. I just know that there was an issue with something happening in chorus to the students. Gosh, so there's some sort of issue in chorus. Correct. So they switched her around so she'd be in your sixth period. Correct. Got it. And I guess there's different students in that other period of chorus. Correct. Gotcha. Sorry, got to make sure I write. Yep. Um, and so you noticed that her behavior was a lot different from third to sixth period. She was more withdrawn, more tired, but was, that's just how she more often is like, that's her natural kind of. So that particular day when I messaged her, she's like, that's something to the effect of that's her, you're seeing her in her natural state. I forgot to give her her ADHD meds or something like that. Gotcha. That particular day. Yeah. But it didn't seem to improve. But that's just how she was. Yeah. Wow. Well, today, when I was watching Grizzly, she showed uh, a piece of uh, an article, a piece of work, a piece of information. And it was in the paperwork that was all sent to her, I believe. And it showed the medication for, I would, I would believe it was for Magdalene. Magdalene hadn't been taking that medication because I think she was, there's like 30 capsules in the jar or whatever and when prescribed, but when they checked, there's only tw there's twenty eight, and that was like four weeks, literally a month had gone by by the time they checked that. So she hadn't been taking that med medication for a while, from what I can understand. Okay. Um, what about her, her grades? How have they been? So all year they've been DF. Okay. And in the past, like she would, she wouldn't do all of her assignments, but like she, every couple of assignments she would do one. But lately, um, since moving into my sixth period, she hasn't. There might be one or two assignments that she completed since moving into my sixth period till now. Okay. Have you talked to her about it or? Um, I do. I meet with her uh -huh. weekly. Like, hey, how's your assignments going? She's like, I'm working on them. Okay. But that's like the extent. She of just says she's working on it. And in your weekly meetings, I mean, has she ever talked about life at home and mentioned being sad or depressed or, okay. No. Has she ever shown any signs of being depressed? I mean, with her just, mm -hmm. it's hard, it's, it's hard to tell because she was always ha having anxiety. She was always like yeah. putting her head down like she wasn't feeling well. So, gotcha. um, has she ever, I guess. Has she ever expressed anything? I know that you would have reported it, obviously, but has she ever expressed anything about wanting to hurt someone else or hurt herself? No. So as far as like her state of mind or her mental state in your class, as far as you know, she's just very quiet, but right. you wouldn't necessarily describe that as like sad or depressed, just withdrawn. Right. Right. That's what it sounds like. I just want to make yeah. sure I'm understanding. Like having a hard time focusing. Yeah. But she also has ADHD. Right. So. She does. She also has an IEP. Oh, okay. So do you think maybe? What so I always thought that it was part like because she struggles with learning. Mm -hmm. So I always thought 
you know, kids that struggle with learning also are a little bit withdrawn and have a hard time focusing. Yeah. So, so it's common of kids who struggle and that might be because they're just not understanding what's in. Okay. Correct. Uh, so it doesn't sound like her grades have necessarily declined, but they were never, they were never. It's been above worse this quarter since we moved in January. To gotcha. Okay. Um, has there, and you've only known her for this school year, so it's only been what six, seven months. Yeah. Um, I guess has there been any aside from being moved to your sixth period, has there been any other notable shift in behavior that in your experience might indicate something's happening at home or no. in your like experience that there's something more going on? Okay. So nothing, nothing has kind of raised any red flags with you that there might be something, the something only, happening. The only difference is from when she was moved to my six, I did notice that the behavior changed and that's why I was Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I got it. Any other like interaction or involvement with you specifically, or any other conversations? We've had other conversations about her not passing my class. And, uh -huh. Hey, she's missing these assignments. Um, and what's her? Uh, what what's she say to that? Sometimes she'll respond, and sometimes okay, I'll work with her on it. But okay, it sounds like that's kind of. Mad. I'm working on it, kind of thing, but nothing really definitive. Correct. Okay. Um, has she ever disclosed, has she ever disclosed that anything, uh, anything being abused at home in any no. way, physically, sexually, verbally? No. She's never disclosed or shown any signs of that, that you, I mean, you've been a teacher for 10 years, so I, I trust that you, yeah. you can see that kind of stuff or you have your own way of identifying that. But. I've been here at, I've been a teacher for 13. Oh, so yeah. So yeah. Even more so. So no. Okay. I haven't noticed that. Gotcha. So nothing that's raised that red flag to you no. thus far. And there's also, if I'm understanding you right, nothing that's raised red flag that she's necessarily sad or depressed, but it seems more like she's withdrawn because of her, uh, possibly because she has trouble learning. That is how I have yeah. like, yeah. process, like process it. Well, that's or, what it appears like to yeah. you, right? It would look different otherwise, I guess. Um, Okay. Well, I mean, obviously, obviously we're out here talking to you because we're all, we're all working very hard and very concerned and we're all just looking for some things that might help us. Is, is there anything as someone who's known her for several more months than I have that might help me or help any of us get in her head a little bit and maybe figure something out? Unfortunately, I wish I did. But... That's fine. That's completely fine. I just, you know, always looking for always looking for something but um do you have any questions for me is there anything i can okay no. cool well thank you for talking to me can i just have you do one more thing um raise your right hand do you throw out everything you told me is truth yes thank you i appreciate it um i'm gonna end this 13 30 hours right so far all you got all from my from what i'm hearing all the police have got after these interviews is the fact that Magdalene thought he was weird, right? Because he just, he was just there, he was eating the food, he made you feel uncomfortable, you know what I mean? And the fact that her grades were low, so she was struggling, really struggling. Um, and that was it, really. You know what I mean? Because the, there's, you don't hear of them saying her grades got better come December and January. Apart from one teacher who said her grades are now possibly a B or C, where before they would have been a, a D, a C or a D, they've gone up to a B to C. Right? So, they're not really getting a lot from the teachers. 
Today's date is February 29, 2024. The time is 1520 hours. Uh, it's reference to Orange County case number 24-011313. I'm Detective Bradshaw with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Sir, can you say your first name for me, please? My name is Vitalo. Spell it for me. I-T-A-L-O. And what's your last name? Brett. B-R-E-T-T. Okay. So, Mr. Brett, you are a first teacher here at Meadowoods, or I'm sorry, not Meadowoods, Correct, yeah. Okay, so I just had a couple of questions for you um, in reference to um, assume that she was one of your students. Would that be correct? She was, yes. Okay, what period did you have her in? I had her initially in sixth period for the start of the year. And okay. She requested to be moved to third period because she was having some issues of like not being able to keep up, or rather, she was keeping up, but it was too many behavioral issues around her. So okay. She, entire, she requested to move to third. So not behavioral issues like specifically with her, but with other kids uh, that were in your yeah. class that she didn't like. Correct, yeah. I got it. Okay. Um, did she ever talk to you about her home life, anything that was going on with her? Anything like that? No. She never said anything to you? Did at any point, did she ever disclose any sort of physical or sexual or mental abuse to you? No. Okay. Did she mention anything to you about um, having any suicidal ideations, ever making any attempts at suicide? No. Okay. Did she ever express to you at any time if she had any mental or medical diagnosis? No. Okay. Did she discuss any taking any medications with you for anything? No. The only time I've ever seen her take anything was Tylenol. Okay. In the front office, Ms. Schilling could confirm with that too because we both kind of saw her because we were trying to figure out how to make sure that she was okay to take those. Okay. Here, so. Did you notice any sort of like recent changes in her behavior from the start of the school year until now? Not really, no. She just seemed happier within the third period class that we were in, okay. which is the advanced trouble course I have. She seemed happier there. She learned her music really quickly, as with the rest of the girls in that class. Um, she usually is very participatory. She's usually up performing with us. She's just, she doesn't miss a concert. She doesn't miss anything. Um, the only thing I guess I could note is like on Friday she was sitting, but that a lot of the girls sit at random times and that's uh -huh. related to either they have cramps or whatever. Uh -huh. So I, I didn't think that was odd, but you know, she usually is up and participating and okay. active. She didn't tell you that anything was wrong. So again, she never missed any concerts. You don't hear her mother say, "Oh, she she go she will have concerts every, now and again." You know what I mean? You never hear her mother talking about these concerts that she never missed. That Madeline never missed any of the concerts, but you don't hear the mother mention talking about that, right? Why? Why? I'd be gloating about a child of mine if there's in a concert if they got an award for uh some door decoration you want to hear me when my grandson's getting a certificate you know what i mean i'm going yay you know what i mean i'm i'm literally jumping about going yeah you done it you got it babe you're getting there you know what i mean but you don't hear nothing like that from jen about her daughter on Friday? No. Okay, she didn't mention to you that anything had been going on or that she was feeling sad or down or no. anything like that? Okay. And you haven't, in your opinion, you haven't seen her have any sort of signs that she's been depressed since the beginning of the school year at all or any no. suicidal? Like, she's just seemed pretty normal and very, you know, very happy, okay. easy, making her friends. You know, she had, she, I would say she bloomed a lot more in, in there because she had her, her friends there. So okay. she was more outspoken and more confident you know she's mm -hmm. very helpful in my class she even organized my piano once because it was all papers on top of it she put it all together and just she wanted to do that so you know that's not really not noticed anything off about her okay now i don't know how you like do your grades or anything yeah. like that in your class um has she declined at all in her participation like in her grades anything of that nature that you've no, noticed she maintains pretty steady and i just grade participation for standing and performing and the concerts so i've not noticed anything of decline she is there that the only time and even on friday when she was sitting i think she was still singing with us she okay. was just sitting down which was the only thing you know that was different yeah gotcha okay um how about her you've never overheard her talking to her friends about anything like that at all
very, you know, when I send a message and talking points or whatever, she reads them. I got before asked me on the Monday evening. Uh huh. Not wasn't home yet. Okay. She was like, "Hey, have, it's cool today, you know." So she, you know, so she knows, you know, she can reach out to me and it's open to do so and anything because, it's, you know, she's always involved. So okay. So since the beginning of the school year more so happy now that she's in your third period able to make friends she's yeah. pretty consistent so nothing out of the ordinary that you can think of off the top of your head nothing that would be alarming or like alarming the only most alarming thing i've seen was the message that monday when she was missing so okay and what was that message it was, i can read it to you exactly. okay like, talking points <laughs> so um this was through the app talking points talking mm -hmm. points is what district and county uses to communicate between teachers okay um it's faster than emails just talking point is an app that you can have on your phone so as you can imagine all the teachers have it and it's a way to contact parents or parents to contact teachers checks things so um on oh that's loading so on monday February 26 at 5 36 p.m she said hi Make it to school today. She hasn't made it home today. Um, then at 5:33, when I was able to reply back, I said, "Hi, Miss Soto. I don't know." Checking. Did I hear that right? Did you say 5:26? Yes. Let's go. Go back. Talking mm -hmm. points is what district and county uses to communicate between. Teachers. Okay. Um, it's faster than emails. Just checks things. So, um, on. Oh, that's loading. So on Monday, February 26th at 5 36 p.m., she said, Hi, make it to school today. She hasn't made it home today. Um, then at 5 33, it did 5 26. Now that's a hell of a time difference from what Jen says. She said she was at the school for four, she didn't come out at 10 past four, she hadn't come out. So she left the school because there's cars behind her and she's holding these cars up. So she left the school, went to her mother's. So she probably got there about what, quarter past four, 20 past four, the lightest, because she said she just took the road, it's a five minutes drive. Right? She wasn't there. So then she's going outside and she's right down the main road, the road that. that Madeline would walk along if she was coming to her grands. She then went back to her grand to the office where where the grandmother worked, and they said no, she's not here. So I'd say about half four, right? Half four. She said, "Hold oh, on," and she messaged a friend, and then uh, Madeline's friend. She said no, she wasn't in school, and then she messaged the teacher. They went to the school. That was it. They went back to the school, the school was shut. So she messaged her friends, the friends said no, she wasn't in school. So then she messaged the teacher at about quarter to four, uh, quarter to five, five, 4.45. Yeah. And I was saying she messaged at 5.26. That's a good 30, 35. 40 minutes difference why would she wait that long to message the teacher i'm sorry but if i'm in the queue in a car in a queue to pick my child up and my child does not come out by say 10 past four like she said i don't care about the parents behind me i want to know where my child is i'll be out of that car and in that school Right? Wanting to know where was she? I wouldn't be waiting till by what the teacher says here at 5.26 to find out that she wasn't in school at all. That's a long time to get in touch before you got in touch with anyone from the school. 10 past 4, 10 past 5, and then another 16 minutes on that, over an hour before she contacted anyone from the school. Over an hour. 
I was able to reply back. I said, hi, Ms. Soto. I had a check-in discovery. She was absent for periods one to five and period seven. Period six, I guess, hadn't marked her, but that's not really so strange because sometimes teachers just forget <laughs> like right. that, that happens. So, um, but yeah, I told her, you know, that's very alarming. Just, you know, please keep me informed. And I reported it to my, my teacher mentor. Mm -hmm. So, and then she reported it to Kelly Armstrong and everyone else in the school. And then the, I guess the, and she'd been waiting for the police for a while. So okay. I kind of talked a little bit then, you know, I, I asked the 620 she was home yet, hasn't made it home yet waiting for the police and then so I've heard it was cop trying to speed things up but that was it so then I haven't reached out back because I could I had trying to get in your space so okay. um is there anything else you can think of that I haven't asked you that you can recall right now or anything else you want to tell me um, nothing comes to mind I think you know I just yeah her behavior is very consistent in class you know she's Whenever I see her out of class or whatever, I would say hi. She replies back normally. So. And she seems like a pretty happy. Yeah, she just seems pretty happy. It was just, and this is part of it why it was, was so shocking that she'd be gone. It's just that how close it happened, how she just, you know, whenever people started saying maybe she ran away, it just didn't, didn't seem like it to me that she could be the type to run away. Okay. But then, of course, the information started coming out about what was happening. So. Gotcha. Okay. Um, do you swear and affirm everything you told me is true to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So the time is now 15, 26 hours. Detective Rembis with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. This is in reference to case number 24-11313. Okay. It is February 28, 2024 at 1641 hours. And with me is your full name, please. Uh, Gerald W. Belmore. Okay. Oh, if you're still around, if you're still here, I've been here watching this whole time while I'm working and cleaning. Just want to say you're doing a great job. Thanks for reviewing this. Thank you, Georgia. I've just seen your message. Thank you very much. I can't take credit for this. As I said, Grizzly True Crimes, this is a video. But I have been following this case. And there's a lot, as I said, there's a lot of stuff I cannot get because I'm not in the USA. So I do have to wait for certain youtubers to put it out there but out of courtesy i always give it like 24 hours before i use it as well so like at least they can get their the information out on their channel first at least and have it out there for 24 hours before i use it and put it out there so but thank you for that um i'm just i was just going through what the police have learned right so really, what they've learned from these interviews of the teachers, he was weird. She struggled with her schoolwork. She was happy. And she struggled with anxiety. Oh, and that she wanted to live in the woods. Which was a bit strange for them because they knew she liked her friends to be with friends. So that's basically, in my opinion, what they've learned. And I think a lot of teachers are a bit, well, if only I probably paid a bit more attention, I might be able to help them a bit more with something. But it's it's a complex in case this is. Very complex thing. Because you just, no one, not Jen, and not that piece of SHIT, is telling the truth. But as I all say, behind the truth, with every lie, like, behind every lie is the truth. But this is the best part, this part. I love these two. They're neighbours. And they're nosy neighbours. But believe me, when you want some information, these are the people to go to. So listen to this very carefully. And can I get your phone number, please? It's... Uh... Thank you. Um, can you tell me everything that you know about the missing person? Well, we just heard about it. Uh, we saw all the commotion overnight, but we just heard about it this morning that there was her here that, that is missing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we haven't seen her. We usually see her coming home with her school and apparently takes her to school in the morning. And But we haven't seen her for a few days. So she usually comes and takes the dog out for a walk mm -hmm. to do his number. And uh, so, like I say, we haven't seen her in 
this week at all. Last time I, we saw her, I believe it could have been Saturday or Sunday. We saw her taking the little dog out. So. Okay. Um. What about the? Yeah, that's confusing to me. He says last time he saw her was Saturday or Sunday, taking the little dog out. But we know from the grandmother and the grandfather that she was at the grandfather's house on the Saturday. And on the Sunday, she was at the grandmother's because she had a birthday party. So this is what we're finding a bit hard. Did she, because she was due to go home on a Saturday, but she was in tears, crying, upset, she didn't want to go home. So the grandmother got into uh, the ex, her ex-husband, which was the grandfather, and he said, eat, have a full of day. So she spent the day at ease. But it doesn't say, and now I've listened to that interview with the grandfather and the aunt because she was there as well, and I never heard anything about where she was Saturday night, whether she went home or whether she went back to the grandmother's, right? But they're saying they're seeing a Saturday or Sunday. Perhaps she did go home Saturday, and on Sunday morning they did see her walking that little dog. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know, it's just too many, mm, really. What is the truth here? What happened? Where was she Saturday night? Was she at the grandfather's? Was she at the grandmother's? Or did she go home? I hadn't seen him since last year. He wasn't here around last year. And this year we saw him about you know, a week and a half ago. We saw him coming to the unit and, and leaving. Okay. Um, and you've been here since? We Well, we came on December 28th. Well, we were here on the, let's see, yeah, the 28th. And then we left for a cruise on July the 2nd for, for nine and 10 days. So we were back here on, on Ju January uh, 11th. We were back on, and we've been here since. So. Okay. Um, and in the past few days, have you seen a any of the family members? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when was that, more or less? It was last week, sometimes last week. We saw, I, I don't know, I can't nail down the date, the day, but it was last week. We saw him come and go. Okay. Uh, was he driving or walking? No, he uh, he came out. When I saw him, I was going out to check my van to make sure the windows were all closed. Mm -hmm. And he was coming out, and he went to the white car that they own they it together. Mm -hmm. But he, he went and sat in the white car. Okay. And, and then I didn't see him after that. So why would Stefan that piece of S-H-I-T, come out the house and go and sit in Jen's car. Was he doing something on his phone he shouldn't have been doing? Was he talking to someone on the phone he shouldn't, uh, he didn't want anyone else to hear? Was that uh, on the weekend or earlier in the week that you remember? I believe It was on the weekend. It was on the weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. Okay. That I saw him. Was he by himself at that time? Yeah, okay. he was by himself. And the white car, what's, what does it look like? Uh, I think it's a knee. Was it a knee? Sorry, I'll just come out of my pajamas. Of course. We just got back from swimming. Oh. Was it was it a knee sand that he's got or, or the, the white car? I don't know. What kind, what kind of car? Yeah, this Is it a four-door, a two-door, oh. or something else? It's always parked beside our. Yeah, van. it's always parked beside ours. There, I'm not. I'm like that. If anyone asks me about a car, does ask if say something happened and I, I was they come and said, did did you see the car? I go and if they ask me the brand, the make of the car, I go. I don't know the make. All I know is it's got four wheels, four doors, and a steering wheel, and it gets you from A to B. Don't ask me the make of car. 
don't. I don't know. I know nothing about cars. My son doesn't even know how to change the wheel on a car, yet my six-year-old grandson does. And that gobs that my son was gobsmacked one day in the car when my six was talking about this wheel changing and whatever. And he's saying the only thing I regret my dad not showing me was how to change a car, a wheel on a car. And all of a sudden, Ellis, uh, my grandson, piped up. That's easy. You you get the this machine, this thing. You put it under the car. You pump it up. You lift it up off the ground. You take the tire off, the bad tire off. Take that off, then you put the new tire on, you screw the bolt, and then you pump it back down, and away you go. Sort of thing. And my son's going, mouth is dropping to the floor, and he's thinking, how the hell do you know that? And I'll tell you how, because he watches, he used to watch my YouTube channels. And I'd be careful with what he's watching. And sometimes he'd be watching something, and I'd be sitting there watching it with him, and I'm mesmerised by what he's watching thinking wow you know what i mean but he's not allowed to watch my youtube channel him because apparently he's been learning some bad words so he knows he's not allowed to watch it no more and he's okay with that he watches his youtube kids which believe me isn't that great either and the handicap and the spot yeah. the handicap i Sorry, I, I, I. But you know this car to be. Uh... Yeah. Yes. As far well, as we know, as far as we know. She drives it. Yeah. And she's got the handicap sticker. Right. But he's, I saw him going to it. Now, whether or not he drives it, I don't know what he came in himself, his own car. I don't even know if I, he has one. I don't one. know. So. Um, well, another question I have if they saw him getting into Jen's car, on the Saturday or Sunday. Now, he said, and he, well, he, not him, he said he got there Saturday. His parents have said he got there Sunday. He left Sunday. So he got there about 6.30, they said, because he messaged them or phoned them to tell them he was in Kissimmee. And so if he was sitting in Jen's car, how could that be if she was at work? She was at work because that's why she didn't go to Magdalene's 13th birthday party. She was at work. So how could he be sitting in her car on the Sunday if uh, Jen was at work? Unless it was late on the evening, like say 10.30 when she come home. Sometime after 10.30, they saw him. But they don't actually give a time as when they saw him. He says he just went out to check his windows were all shut on his van. Um, what about the... Oh, Juan? Mm -hmm. uh, I saw him once this year. I saw him once. I didn't get to talk to him. I saw him coming into the unit. Uh, gee, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. About okay. two weeks ago. Okay. Two weeks, week and a half. Yeah. No. He came, he came. One is, we're not sure if he's the grandfather or he's, because don't forget, she was married before for a short time to this other guy. And if you want to know about that, go over to Grizzly True Crime. She's got a, a video out right there talking about that and the divorce and everything. I'm going to go and find that one out myself and have a look, get some notes off that one. And um, so we're not sure if you won, the, uh, who owned the house, who rented it out to Jen and the other two housemates, all those rooms were rented out separately, right? And I should imagine like at 600 a month, yeah? So... He rented, but we're not sure if he's the grandfather or if he's the uh, ex-husband's father. I think it's a grandfather, but we're not sure. 
came and went in the unit. He, he's always. I, me I meant to say hello to him, but I couldn't catch him before he went in. He, he was always living there. And then they moved in with him. And How long ago was that? Do you oh, remember? I don't, I don't remember. Like years, months, years? Years ago. Oh, years ago. Years ago. Um, after, right after they bought the place. And, um, and, uh, and then, um, and like he, him and. Oh, I know. Like two peas in a pod. They, he taught her how to ride her bicycle and took her. He, he used to take her to school. Yeah. And, and, and we uh, told him he was fixing up a, a van to travel around the country. And we told him, I said, boy, when you leave, I said, she's gonna really going to miss you. And he said, yeah. He said, so. yeah, I've got a real. I must admit, when this first came out, when we was watching it on the, when I was watching it the other day, right, and this come out, people was thinking, they was talking about Stefan. And we're all thinking that. And I'm thinking, Stefan's got a van. Stefan's got to buy a van. And go and go. That's not a good, that's not good for thinking, right? But it wasn't, it was yeah, his grandfather. Guys, it was yeah. Hold on. It was either the grandfather or her uh, ex-husband's father. Come on. Hmm. But anyways. Does he still visit that you know? Well, I've he only seen him year. once. Last, him last year, year we saw him quite a few times. Yeah. He'd come in with a van and then uh, he'd but go we're in not here all and do it. His... You know, we're out and about sometimes and so we don't. He, but, you know, it could have been here more times. Yeah, I know he comes, I think, and does his wash here. Yeah, but I would this year I saw him once. Yeah, but he could have been here more. Well, yeah, he could have been here more when we weren't here, but uh, we've seen him once this year, so okay. And that was about a week and a yeah, week and a half last ago. Week, so, ago, yeah, maybe. last week or the week. So, if the grandfather or ex husband's father was there, say a week before she went missing, he would just see that Maggie was sleeping in the living room come dining room because she couldn't afford to put Maggie in a bedroom because that would mean she'd have to pay extra £600 a month for Maggie, which I think is a shame. And I'm wondering if the father knew about that because he did say he did go for custody of her but he lost, right? Now, perhaps at the time, Jen was in a better living situation where Madeline had her own bedroom because we know when she was married, uh, the guy she was married to had a daughter and they, both the girls, Madeline and her ex-husband's daughter, had their own bedroom and Jen and her ex-husband shared another bedroom, all upstairs, right? But then they split up and then she moves into this house with which she rents from her father or ex-husband's father, right? Who pays, who she pays rent to. Now, did he know that Madeline was sleeping? Did the father, did Madeline's father know that she was, her bedroom was actually in the living room come dining room? Because I'm sure he could offer her a better place to live, where she had her own room, everything. But then again, perhaps Madeline didn't want to leave because don't forget, she got her friends. And someone like Madeline rely on her, on friends. They rely on them to turn to them in time of need when they when they're getting anxious or when someone is worrying them. They phone them. They message them. I can't take this no more. My mum's doing my head in, right? And things like that. Mum's always moaning at me again. Oh my god! What am I going? Oh my god! You know they rely on their friends. So by moving to her father, which would be in Texas, she'd lose all that friends and she'd have to make new friends again, which can be very hard for a young girl like this with, who suffers with anxiety. So a move like that is not good.
But it just makes me wonder if the father, her father knew how, her, how the sleeping arrangements were. Obviously not. He can be four. Yeah. He, okay. Uh, I sure hope that the, they I find her. I hope you find her all okay. right. Okay. I see they're searching the woods here. I don't know. But she went missing at, at, at the park near her school? Is that what? Uh, that's she was re reported missing from, uh, from school. school. From school. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, when they said park, I said, why would they drop her off at the park? They usually yeah. take her to the school. You know yeah. what I mean? They, Lisa, that's what I'm assuming they do every morning. They take her right to the school and pick her up and bring her back. Yeah. No, they don't take her right to the school. Because she doesn't like Stefan's car. Perhaps when her mum took her, she'd take her right to the school. But when Stefan took her, he didn't. He used to drop her off by the church or just down the road from the church, like he did. Like he said he did the other when she went missing. Bring her oh. back from school, yeah. And you told me earlier that was usually. Yep, and. All the times we've seen her was. A... He goes out in the morning with her, and then sometimes her we're not always here. But then at an eight, I don't know what time school gets out fairly early. Anyway, yeah, so she run. comes back with her. four, four thirty. Run in oh, there. Oh no, no, it's earlier than that. Earlier than that, when she brings her home. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, when you last saw her um, walking the dog, was that a, a weeknight, a school night, or was it a, a I think weekend? It was last weekend, but I'm not sure. Should have been on the Which weekend. Which was unusual because usually she doesn't walk. It's usually. It's unusual for her to walk oh, the dog. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of unusual. That's why I kind of, when I was sitting there, I thought, oh, she's walking the dog. So, but, yeah, and she, and she came back with the dog. Yeah. And went back in with it. Oh. Hmm. And that was in the afternoon, you said earlier? It yeah. Was, uh, on the weekend sometime. Yeah, I think. Was, I think it was in the afternoon. Pretty sure it was in the afternoon, as far as we know. Uh, okay. so. uh, when you, do you remember what he was wearing that day? Oh. He wears a cap. Yeah. He wears actually, a... it was backwards. Oh, because, was it? Oh, yeah, I didn't it notice was backwards. That. So the, the, the thing was in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So I don't know what he had on. I couldn't tell you what he had on. No. Okay. Um, anything else you can think of that might be important for me to know? I, well, you saw three people come in and, and they, they yes, were greeted. Yeah, that, at was, the, on Monday. that uh, was Monday. Monday. Uh, was it a, after she was reported missing? Or? Well, I guess so. And, and all I saw was somebody hug somebody. In the doorway. Yeah, I couldn't tell who it was they hugged or what. I just mm -hmm. saw it because I was sitting there and mm -hmm. it, I, I, when somebody walked by, to kind of look. Yeah. And I kind of looked and, and there were, I think there were three. And I, I know there were two adults. I don't know if there was a, a child with them or if there were three adults. I can't, but I didn't pay that much attention. Can you tell if there were males, females, or there was one male and mm -hmm. there was a female? And I don't know what the, who the other. I can't remember. If you had to guess, what time of day was it? Oh, I don't know. I thought it was kind of unusual because they don't usually, the only yeah. people that go in there are the renters. Yeah, they're, they're the people and that live upstairs. The people that live upstairs and one has a son. Yeah. And, and the other lady is by herself, I think. I think so. I've never yeah. seen her with anybody. So, no, I, 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 I can't. I wasn't, you know what I mean? I wasn't paying that much attention. I just kind of caught my eye when three of them went. And I, I'm sure now that you told me that she's been missing since Monday, I'm sure it was a relative that probably came. Yeah. Maybe her sister, because she has a sister. Because so, that was on Monday, wasn't it? I think it was Monday. Yeah, yeah so, so that they probably noticed her missing. So probably told relatives. Yeah. So, Okay. Um, could you state your full name and date of birth for me? Yes, it's Barbara Belmore. I'm born December 4th, 1946. Okay. And I'm a Canadian. Okay. Can you raise Canadian your right hand for me? <laughs> Do you swear and affirm everything you told me is true and correct? Well, I'm not sure because I, you know, you're, I, you're guessing. But as, as insofar as, as you remember. As, as I remember it, but I wouldn't want to 
you know, specific times or specific of course. dates or anything. No, I, I understand that. Yeah. Sir, can you raise your right hand yes. for me? Do you swear and affirm everything you told me is true and correct? Yes, as far as I know, everything is true and correct what I gave you. Thank you. I'm ending my recording at 1651 hours. Right, so that's the ending of that. Now, yes, it was long, and but as I said, there's certain questions that have come up. So, it, who was it that saw walking the dog on a Saturday or Sunday? Right, so was it Jane or was it? Magdalene, Magdalene, and what time did they see, because getting times off these two would be hard, right, <laughs> even though they're nosy and they see everything going on, who's coming and who's going, they not not, oh, it's ten past two, and such and such is just walking to his car, you know what I mean, they're not looking at the times, they're just taking, oh, there's that guy who's going into the car. You know what I mean? So, getting times off them. So, I'd be curious to know who, what time they saw him getting into the car, which is going to be an impossibility. Um, because Jane was supposed to have been working Saturday. I don't know if she's working Saturday, but I know she's working Sunday because... She didn't go to her 13th birthday. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is a milestone in any young girl's life. It's her 30th birthday. Because that's when you become a teenager. You're not 12, you're not 11, you're not 10, you're 13. That's a teenager. Right? That's when you start your teenager life. So for the mother not to be there, no, don't sit right with me. Um, you know, if she was there on the Saturday, which makes me think she was, because Madeline was supposed to go home on the Saturday, but she didn't want to go home. You heard the grandmother. I don't know if you've heard it. I've got it on my playlist. If you're interested, please go back and look at the playlist. I'll put the playlist as this YouTube chat, as this video goes up on YouTube, it'll come up. And it's, I'm going to only put it up about half, the link, and it comes up at the top of the page. And it normally comes up about half an hour or an hour before the end. So if it's a two hour video, then it'll come up after an hour. Right, and it's got all, the, all my videos in there that I've done on Magdalene. And she said she got very upset and everything and did not want to go home on the Saturday. So she ended up going to the grandfather's and spending the, time, the day there. But we don't know if she stayed at the grandfather's or if she went back to the grandmother's on the Saturday night or if she went home on the Saturday night. We don't know. If she went home, then it's possibly possible that I saw her Sunday morning walking the dog. But if the mother was at work Sunday, then who was at home so Sunday to look after her? Because Stefan wasn't there. He was at home apparently still at his parents' house. He didn't leave until the afternoon. They said it was about 3, 3 30-ish he left. And he got there about 6.30 because they phoned him or he phoned them or he messaged them to say he got there. So, and that was on the Sunday. And on the Saturday, we know he wasn't there on the Saturday because Madeline phoned him or messaged him asking if he was coming to the party on the Sunday. Right? And then something was said in that message or on that phone call. And after that, she messaged a friend saying, Freaking out here, I don't know what to do, blah, blah, blah. But her friend didn't see that message till Sunday. 
So when she got into seeing it, she got, she said, oh, I'm fine now, I'm fine. You know what I mean? So, there's a lot of back and forth. We need a definite timeline of, and I know Grizzly's working on this timeline. I'd like to do the timeline myself. I know there is a timeline out there. I've just shown you at the beginning a timeline, but it's the basic, right? What we want to know is where she was Saturday night, uh, whether she was at her grandfather's, her grandmother's, or home. We want to know, oh God, what else was it we wanted to know? There's something else that like, we need to put a timer. It's definitely something to do Saturday to Sunday. We need that timeline for Saturday to Sunday. We know she was at the grandmother's Friday night. On uh, Saturday, she went to her grandfather's and spent the day there, but we don't know where she was Saturday night. Don't know if she was at the grandmother's or back at home or what. But if her mother was going to work Sunday, well, it all depends what time her mother was going to work on Sunday. Being as her mother wasn't getting home till half ten, I can't see her mother going into work for eight o'clock in the morning. Right? So, perhaps her mother was there Saturday and was there longing off to get herself and Madeline ready and take her back to her mother's, her grandmother's. That could be a point there. So, we just got to work on a time. We don't, it's not all there. It's not all there. And we're, I'm going to listen to all these, I'm taking notes as I'm watching these videos. I've took notes before and I'm taking more notes. Right, as I go through these videos. Well, tomorrow night we're going to be looking at all the interviews that Jane Soto has done. So, if you're interested in this case, I'll be back again tomorrow at 8 p.m. UK time, and I'll be covering Jen Soto, the mother of the year. Not a bit of sarcasm there. I like a bit of sarcasm occasionally. And when someone really gets me riled up, you might hear a lot more sarcasm tomorrow on well, definitely when we go over the interviews with Stefan. Oh you'll hear a lot of sarcasm then. Right? So let me know what you think, what your views are on this case. Oh and another thing is a question that kept coming up was how could he got her out of that house with no one seeing? Well sunrise was hold on Sunrise on the Sunday morning was six, uh, Monday morning, sorry, the day she went missing, was 6.47 a.m. Now, I'm going to get, try and get on, find her address so we can get on Google Ma Earth or Google Maps, one of the two. And her living room, the, where their front door is, they've got sliding doors. Right? Now those sliding doors are uh, where Madeline slept, in that area where she slept. So Madeline had like a dresser, a unit in front of those sliding doors. But I heard something today about how a neighbour or someone in the Wangley Lodge People who's lodging there heard some bumping and moving about or something. And they thought it was one of the neighbours. Perhaps, perhaps it was Stefan moving the unit out of the way so he could open the sliding doors. Because you come out, it, because they always parked in the disability parking spaces, which are right next to the houses. Right next to them. Right? So you could look out those windows in of the front window, which would be their front window, but it's now Madeline's makeshift bedroom. Look out that window and you could see the cars. Right? So 
if his car was parked there, he could have come out of either the sliding doors or even the front door, not be seen, walk around past the sliding doors, keeping off the path, just keeping close to the house, and then over to the house, over to his car, and get her in there. And don't forget, he said he left about 7.45 in the morning. So, any time between 11pm on the Sunday night and 7.45am in the morning, and we know at 6.47, so an hour later, he could go, well, I'd say any time between 11pm Sunday night and 6.47am Monday morning, he got her, he carried her out to the car. We know she was carried because her feet, her socks were still clean. When they found her, her socks were still clean. They found her wearing jeans and a green hoodie, and the hoodie was pulled up over her head and her face lying on her front, but her face, I think, must have been to one side, sort of thing. So her face wasn't lying down flat in the, on the ground. It was lying to one side, but with the hoodie over. So, but why? So we know he took her, he carried her there, carried her to the car, and we know there was video footage of him transferring her from the front of the car to the boot of the car. Now, if that is, well, we know the footage is true. It's there. It's there. I'm going to find it. We'll show. I'll show you. Um, he then went back to the house, right? Because Jen said she got home about ten thirty. Um. Her appointment was at 9.15, no, she got up at 9, her appointment was at 10.15 or something like that. She got home about, well, she got home about 10.30, 11 o'clock in the morning and he was there. So sometime in that morning, he, she saw him. So in all that time, she's in that house with him. She's in the boot of the car. Hmm. And I have got the video, I believe I've got the video footage of the dogs. When they take the dogs to the house. I think it was on the Monday night. And, um, because the dogs didn't pick up anything. Well, they did pick up on something, but they couldn't, it didn't give a definite, yes, there's something here. Right? We need to have it checked out. But one dog did pick up on a scent in Jen's car boot. Now, what? How would they pick up a scent of Madeline in the boot of her car? When it was his car that I saw was that was reported to have been in that area at the time when he got his puncture, car puncture. We do know he used her car on the Monday night. He said, oh, he went out driving, looking around and whatever. We know his car, they tracked another white car leaving that complex and go on the same route as you take to that area. They spent about half an hour there. So did, was he going to move her body? Did he put her in the trunk of, her, of Jen's car? And then decide, no, no, I'm going to put her back and put her back. But would that have left a scent long enough for the dogs to pick up on? I don't know, but apparently the dogs picked up on a scent in Jen's boot. So we're going <coughs> to be looking at that. <coughs> Hold on, just got to get my coke. We're going to be looking at that as well. So there's lots to look at, yeah, 
lots. So if you're in on this case, please share this because of certain words being used. It, YouTube came to not push it out. Right, so please share this. Um, if you've liked what you've heard, please give me a like. I do appreciate that. And if you haven't already, subscribe. That way you'll be kept informed of all future videos and all my lives. Where you can join in on the chat. Or if you want, sit in the hedges, as we say. And if you're watching on replay, please give it a like. Let me know your opinion. Message, leave me a message. I'll get back to all my messages. I'll check daily, morning, afternoon, and evening. Right? So I do check. I'll do either reply. If it feels like I need to reply to it, I will. But I'll always give it a heart to show. I've, just to acknowledge I've seen your message. So, anyway. Let me know what you think. So, I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to go... Go on. Something's going on here. I'm going to go now and I'll leave it at that and I'll see you all tomorrow. Hang on. What's happening? I don't know what's happening. I've just gone off the screen. I don't know why. Anyway, so till tomorrow, stay safe. Sorry, wrong one.